In this video, I'm going to walk you through a variety of practice problems all about density. I'm Kelly and welcome back to my channel. If you enjoy learning about chemistry, feel free to hit the subscribe button. In this video, I've got some helpful practice problems to follow up on my last video, which was an introduction to density. For the introductory video, click the link in the description below, or I'll put one of those little scrolly things above. There are a lot of different types of problems relating to the topic of density. Today, I'm going to cover examples such as solving for volume, solving for mass, using the displacement method, determining if something will sink or float in water, and at the end, we'll do a special challenge problem. Feel free to pause the video at any point, try a practice problem on your own, and then press play to see my explanation. Okay, let's get to it. 116 grams of oil is used in a recipe. The density of the oil is 0.0925 grams per milliliter. What is the volume in milliliters of the oil? The formula for density is density equals mass divided by volume. So in order to solve for volume, we have to get volume by itself on one side of the equal sign. Here's how we do that. We're going to use inverse operations to get volume by itself. Mass is being divided by volume. The opposite of division is multiplication. So to undo that, we multiply mass by volume. We have to do this on both sides of the equal sign to ensure that we're keeping the formula equal. Volume cancels out. Now volume and density are being multiplied. So to get volume by itself, we divide by density on both sides. Finally, we have volume equals mass over density. Now we can substitute the information into our rearranged formula. Volume equals 116 grams divided by 0.0925 grams per milliliter. The grams cancel out and we're left with 1,254 milliliters. Rounded to three significant figures, we have 1,250 milliliters. Let's try another one solving for volume. The density of solid aluminum is 2.70 grams per cubic centimeter. What volume of aluminum would have a mass of 7.8 grams? Since we're solving for volume again, we can use our rearranged formula, volume equals mass divided by density. We substitute the values from our problem and then we divide 7.8 grams by 2.70 grams per cubic centimeter. The grams cancel out and our final answer is 2.9 cubic centimeters. The density of solid copper is 8.96 grams per cubic centimeter. Calculate the mass of copper in 2.5 cubic centimeters of copper. To solve for mass, first we need to rearrange the density formula to have mass by itself on one side of the equal sign. To do this, we simply multiply both sides by volume, so mass is equal to density times volume. Then we can substitute our values in for density and volume and multiply 2.5 cubic centimeters by 8.96 grams per cubic centimeter. The cubic centimeter cancels out and our answer is 22.4 grams. Rounded to two sig figs is 22 grams. Diamonds are measured in carats, and one carat is equal to 0.200 grams. The density of a diamond is 3.51 grams per cubic centimeter. What is the mass in carats of a diamond measuring 3.2 cubic centimeters? Using our rearranged formula, first we're going to substitute the values for volume and density to solve for the mass in grams. Then we're going to convert the grams into carats using our conversion factor. 3.51 grams per cubic centimeter times 3.2 cubic centimeters gives us a mass of 11.232 grams. Then we multiply by our conversion factor, arranging it so that grams cancels out and we're left with carats. 11.232 grams divided by 0.2 grams equals 56.16 carats. Round to two sig figs is 56 carats. Now that's a big diamond. One way of calculating the density of oddly shaped objects 
is called the displacement method. If something has a weird shape, like a jagged rock, we can't exactly measure the volume using cubic centimeters or milliliters right away. So what do we do? We can put some water in a graduated cylinder, measure the initial volume, then add the object in and measure the final volume. The difference from the initial volume and the final volume is the volume of the object. An object with a mass of 8.5 grams raises the level of water in a graduated cylinder from 20 milliliters to 25 milliliters. What is the density of the object? With these kinds of problems, I like to make a little drawing to go along with it because it helps me piece together the information. Here we have 20 milliliters to start, then the graduated cylinder with the object in it has a final volume of 25 milliliters. The volume we're going to plug in into the density formula is the difference between those two values, so 5 milliliters. To calculate the density, we take our mass, 8.5 grams, and divide it by the volume, 5 milliliters. Our final answer is 1.7 grams per milliliter. The density of pure silver is 10.5 grams per centimeter cubed. If 4.25 grams of pure silver pieces is added to a graduated cylinder containing 10.2 milliliters of water. To what volume level will the water in the cylinder rise? To solve this problem, first we have to find the volume of the silver pieces. To do that, we use the rearranged density formula, volume equals mass divided by density, substitute the values, and divide 4.25 grams by 10.5 grams per cubic centimeter to get a volume of 0.4 cubic centimeters. So our silver pieces have a volume of 0.4 cubic centimeters. One cubic centimeter is equal to one milliliter. So 0.4 cubic centimeters is equal to 0.4 milliliters. If we were to add this piece of silver into the graduated cylinder containing 10.2 milliliters of water, the final volume of the water would be 0.4 milliliters more than that or 10.6 milliliters. So our final answer is 10.6 milliliters. Sink or float? That all depends on whether an object has a density greater than or less than the density of water. Water has a density of 1.0 grams per milliliter. A baseball has a mass of 145 grams and a volume of 13.3 inches cubed. Will it float or sink in water? Notice that our volume is given in cubic inches, but in order to compare the density of a baseball to the density of water, it needs to have the same units of grams per milliliter. So first we have to convert 13.3 inches cubed into milliliters using conversion factors. We know that one inch equals 2.54 centimeters. So in one cubic inch, we have 2.54 cubic centimeters and we know that one cubic centimeter is equal to one milliliter. So we can convert our units like this. And we get a volume of 33.782 milliliters. If we divide the mass, 145 grams, by that volume, we calculate the density of the baseball to be 4.29 grams per milliliter. This is greater than the density of water, so the baseball would sink. All right, everyone, congrats on making it this far. To give those brain muscles one final push, let's try this challenge problem. A star in the galaxy has an estimated mass of two times 10 to the 36 kilograms. Assuming the star is a sphere and has an average radius of seven times 10 to the fifth kilometers, calculate the average density of the star in grams per cubic centimeter. The volume of a sphere is calculated with the formula volume equals 4 thirds pi r cubed. To calculate the volume of the star, we start by using the formula 4 thirds equals pi r cubed. The volume is asked for in centimeters cubed though, and we're given kilometers. So first we have to convert from kilometers to centimeters. We do that by moving the decimal place to the right five times, or changing the magnitude of 10 to the fifth to 10 to the 10th. So our radius is seven times 10 to the 10th centimeters.
Now we substitute that value into the formula to get a volume of 1.44 times 10 to the 33rd centimeters cubed. We can substitute our mass and volume into the density formula, like so, and we have an answer of 1.389 times 10 to the 6th grams per centimeters cubed. Our givens only had one significant figure, so we're going to round our final answer to 1 times 10 to the 6th grams per centimeter cubed. We did it! Good job for getting through all those practice problems. Click the thumbs up below if that was helpful, and feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions. This week's special shout out goes to Carol Osborne. You are doing amazing on all your practice problems. Keep up the good work. As always, stay positive and keep learning.